Chambers of Xerx. I've got a lot of history with this amazing piece of content, from getting my first Twisted Bow at 1400 completions, to finishing my last purple there, Ancestral Panties at 2000 KC. But it is time to revisit this iconic piece of content because of two reasons. The main reason is that the collection log came out way later, so none of my items from those 2000 completions ever made it to the log. Jagus's servers were incapable of retroactively remembering progress that you've made before the log. It is what it is. The second reason is that Cox has changed a lot over the years, and I have a lot of new gear to make the raid significantly faster than ever. In this video, you'll see my progress towards filling the Chambers lock slots, and the new strategies that I've learned for Chambers in 2023. Big progress was made, and if you're a fan of these type of videos, slap that like button to let me know and enjoy the video. I've done some chambers here and there after collection log update, mostly because of my Twitch live stream viewer events that I do once in a while. We take viewers, friends, and occasionally learners to these raids for fun. I managed to fill quite a few slots back this way throughout the years. Also, when ancestral kits came out, I did some challenge modes as well for them, which also gave me some slots back too. The biggest time saver was the Twisted Bow log slot that I filled back in the Ancestral Kit Grind, so that was huge. Overall, I filled 5 unique purple slots. These were recorded on progress videos previously, so what you see on the screen is the progress we are starting off with this video. To start off the episode, I did some chill raids with friends here and there recently for fun in my free time. I didn't really innovate much at this point as I was just focused on helping make the raids more chill for them. And maybe get some good slots for good karma. Yes, I was rewarded for being charitable. Hi, uh, rough day. Oh, we st oh my god! Ac actually, we got something. <laughs> uh, imagine dying. Uh, but it's not even a collection log, really. Wait, what? No, it should be. It should be. So Jackix is trolling. There is a glitch going on with Chambers where if you get a new collection lock slot, it doesn't even notify you. And it's been like that forever. This is fine. So that's why I got the Kodai, but there was no pop-up. But you can definitely tell it was new to the log because it only showed one. But this is amazing progress to start off the Chambers log because the Kodai is one of the three most rare items from Chambers. It's the Mega Rare class, same as Twisted Bow. So this will save me a lot of time. Good news guys, after many years of this bug happening, Jagex has accidentally fixed it when they were trying to fix a clan chat bug. So yeah, happy accidents and good job Jagex. Okay, oh whoa, it hit me at 55. That's actually super impressive. So these last few clips where I got my collection on stuff was actually from challenge mode raids. So it's a harder version of the normal raids. It also gives cosmetic kits, but yeah, I was helping my friend out with these and it was well worth it because I got rewarded for some good karma. That's it. Yeah. Oh no, I got the twisted kit. I'm so sorry. We're so close. We're so close. Oh, yo, we did it. Oh my god. Oh my god, twisted buckler. <laughs> And the Twisted Bugler, believe it or not, is actually a new slot. Unfortunately, this clip happened before they fixed the bug. But now that I have the Bugler, there's only five things to get. The Uncut Onyx, Ancestral Top Bottom, Thin's Bulwark, and Elder Maul. So if I really want to start filling some more slots, I'm going to have to do some pretty efficient raiding. Just because there's going to be a lot of dupes coming. So we just got to go for more drops at a faster rate for the next slot unlock, probably. Oh, you got it! Oh my god! You got the dust! So the metamorphic dust allows a user to turn their omelette and give it the option to transform into all the other raids pets. It was a really big drop that I helped my friend get just now. And with that, I'd say I've stocked up a lot of karma for helping out. I'm doing some corner slay on the side for a future video and it's not the FK, but chill enough so that I can listen to a good book and forget I was even doing Slayer sometimes. Recently, I've been checking out this book called the first law of cultivation, chi equals mc squared. If you are a fan of the genre where the main character gets transported to another world, whether it's in books or in anime, 
then you'll definitely like this book. The main character, Lu Jie, is a 20-something year old guy from our world that woke up one day in an ancient Chinese-themed high fantasy world where there's a magic system called Qi. And through Qi, lots of cool magical elements like alchemy exist, and to top it off, there's a lot of cool Chinese-specific fantasy elements as well. What sets him apart from other stories is that our guy is not looking to become the most powerful person in this new world. He just wants to live in peace and avoid conflict of chasing for higher status and immortality. To do so, he is going to master alchemy after being saved by a miraculous healing pill. Using his knowledge of modern day science from his years in university and his rekindled desire to learn about the inner workings of this new world, he seeks to master alchemy to create his own unique path. So far, I've read up to this part of the story. The main character is humble and relatable as he narrates his predicament with meme terms. I look forward to seeing his progress and what sorts of unexpected obstacles he'll face before he can reach his goal. Follow along this story with me by clicking on the links in the description for either the Kindle or Audible versions of Chi equals MC Square Book 1. I started doing Chambers seriously again after a Cox update that happened last month. Most recently, Jagex added a bank right before the start of the raid, making Chambers much nicer to grind, so I'm definitely going to take advantage of that. This has revolutionized how I do solo chambers because in the past, I would bring the same setup for every raid as I solo raided without using ults or friends to hold the raid for me, so there was no banking in between. But now that the bank exists, I can customize my setup to better tackle specific raid layouts, speeding up every single raid significantly. Another update from a while back was Jagex adding permanent storages throughout the raid, meaning I can easily store the supplies I brought in, so I can pick up more potions from the bosses if I were to get them too early. Previously, I couldn't really do that without making a bank. So let's talk about an updated scouting strategy for raids. I'm mostly solo raiding as it's the most convenient and one of the fastest ways to get drops. So I usually just look for a 5 room raid layout because that usually saves a good amount of time versus doing a 6 room raid. And it's more annoying to scout to find out what's in those 6 room raids. Most of the points come from Ohm anyways, so that extra room in some layouts is just not worth it. Secondly, I prefer raids that have overloads in the raid. The earlier the overload, the better because being overloaded speeds up the demi boss rooms. So ideally, I want a Tecton, Mudadao, or Vanguard start, or within the raid in the middle. Also, I typically avoid Ice Demon room, as it's the slowest room. But if everything else fits the previous two criteria, it's okay to do. Let's talk about gear strategy when it comes to scouting. I have a lot of different items to use at my disposal and I definitely can't bring them all. So depending on the layout, I will use different items such as the Os Mountains Fang, Inquisitor Maze, Blood Fairy, and so on. Also, I rarely use the Salve Amulet for most chambers because a Cult Necklace is better with the Shadow. And that is best in slot for Skeletal Mages. Of course, Salve if you don't have my setup. If I get a layout where it's mudded out and no other rooms that give food drops, for example, there's quite a few layouts like that where it's fast but no food drops, then it's going to be difficult to no prep the raid, especially because Shadow does not heal me at home versus using the Sang Staff. However, Blood Fairy is really good for experienced raiders to consistently no prep, even layouts that drop no food. In contrast, I bring Torture to save charges if there is a Vanguard raid, as I typically get surplus food supplies from them. Also, Muntin's Fang is good at Tecton, Fossa, and basically best in slot of Vanguards. So if there is Vanguards in my layout, I definitely bring the Fang over the Mace. But if it's only Tecton and or Fossa, I prefer having the Inquisitor Mace because it is a bit better than the Fang. You might be asking, what about the Scythe of Vitter? I prefer Lance for solo ohm, just because it doesn't require Blood Runes, and Scythe only really is better in solos if I do ultra sweaty strategies and I really don't feel like doing that for consistent runs. However, for groups, I definitely recommend Scything Ohm because it's so easy to do in groups. But those are some of my new scouting related strategies for 2023 chambers. Most raids I do are around 20 minutes or less, and it's easily 30% faster compared to when I last seriously grinded regular cocks. Also really enjoy using thralls, especially for regular chambers. I have the two mid thrall timer thanks to combat achievements. And there's some neat little tricks. For example, the melee thrall uh, is two minutes long. So it'll last me from the second melee hand to the third melee hand consecutively. 
Also, if you're learning how to do any sort of mage run, like, thralls are huge because it helps keep the head turning. So, the ohm strategy is mostly the same, except the mage hand running got a lot more complex for me because now I use the shadow. The shadow is way more DPS than the Sang, but because it's a slower weapon with a longer attack range, you cannot do the normal mage hand running, which is very rhythmic and synchronizes well with the way ohm operates. This strategy with Shadow requires a really good understanding of solo ohm, so I will only provide a gist here because it's too complex, but before that I'll talk about a more simple Shadow method just to get things going for some of you guys maybe learning. There's a simple Shadow Mage method that works, kind of like the Trident Sang Mage running, where you simply attack once at the pinky row to get the drag and then attack once more on the mage side of ohm and running back to the pinky and repeat. This method is very easy to learn. This is still better DPS, I believe, than saying or trying it, but it does miss a lot of attack potential. So the real shadow mage run is very complicated, but the idea is that you need to stand at different attack tiles to maximize hits without taking damage from ohm, as the shadow attack speed is not evenly synchronized with the ohm's attack pattern. You also need to run further back because the shadow's attack range is longer Otherwise, you cannot achieve the drag to dodge Ohm's attacks. The east side, you can Mage Shadow run without taking any damage if done properly, as every attack can be positioned in a way to dodge Ohm and not miss hits. The west side, however, does not work as well because you cannot get dragged the same way as the pathing AI in this game it is clunky depending on the direction you're moving from. The other side, you have to take a hit occasionally, as you run out of dragging options to dodge Ohm's attacks, so you also will take more theoretical damage doing proper Shadow Mage running. Shadow Mage running is really rewarding though, and it saves a lot of time at Ohm, so it's been fun learning it. My times typically now vary from 8 to 9 minutes versus probably like 9 to 10 before. Shadow alone probably saved a minute worth of time every Ohm. Also, the Shadow has changed a lot on how I do raids in general such as the demi bosses, the shadow is easily best in soft Vespula and melee vanguards. It's also really good on small monodile, ice demon, and the other vanguards, and also the rope rune. I may honestly have forgotten something. Shadow easily saves multiple minutes of raid in a solo. Arguably, for an experienced raider, it's more profound than a Tebow at chambers, as the damage gap between shadow and sang is way bigger than Tebow versus Fbo. So this is a nice way to spec the old melee hand and then get into the shadow mage run without taking damage. Oops, I wasn't recording, but damn, we just had a 742 on what the hell? Oh, I got a purple. It's not, it's a deck scroll. Okay, I didn't even know what I was doing, but it works. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty... Pretty solid rate. Oh, purple boys. Uh, it's not a unique though, because apparently they fixed the notification. This is uh, a do. Oh my god, a Kodai. No way. No way, dude. Wow. Now we have two, gone two of these in the in the log. Wow. <laughs> crazy. Well, two drops today. First day back. That's actually crazy. So definitely pretty lucky, as it takes around 28 solo raids without dying to get a purple on average which is easily around 10 hours one of the nicest parts about the bank you know you can just bring that axe with you when you get an early meter dial was that 2500 was it oh shit i didn't realize that was 2500 chambers yeah throughout the years though you know in the span of many years but yeah we 3000 total sucks that it doesn't count towards any of these xerox capes man that's such a troll Whereas top, these counts, normal top counts for the capes, same with tombs, normal tombs count for the capes. Ever since I got the shadow, I've been using it so much. You saw me use it a ton at TOA, but now I'm also using it a ton at chambers because it's incredibly good there. And yeah, first time actually soul room crafting, I found some ways to make it a bit more AFK, such as obviously having a more zoomed out game. So I can actually click super far away and minimize my clicking needs. It's almost as AFK as Blood Runes, just slightly more annoying, but um, no biggie. Especially with the runecrafting outfit nowadays with 60% more runes, this is so much easier to get my runes back compared to before when I was camping Nightmare. Yeah, no outfit back then, no Blood Runes essence back then either. It was rough, but 
This is much better. <gasps> what? No way. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Another one? Oh my god. Well, actually, I I'm actually probably due for another one. I'm at like 37 mil XP, baby. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. How many, how many is that? Two. <laughs> what is this? This is uh, kind of cool, man. Wow, it's one first scroll, dark relic, and elite clue scroll. Oh. Next thing I want to talk about is challenge mode rates. So challenge mode rates is, of course, the harder version of regular chambers. And you get some bonus rewards like the transmog for the omelet. You get the also the capes and the ancestral kits recolors. I've revisited challenge mode cogs as well because I wanted to see if it was more points per hour for me. And sometimes scouting normal rates does get really annoying. Sometimes it could take like five minutes. Right now I'm doing a bit of the group raids in challenge mode. Here I'm going to show you some cool strats that I learned from some of my viewers that uh, went with me. This one I'm about to show you is pretty crazy. Forever Lord's Tecton, they could basically get stuck in this layout. And he will not attack for a while, which means he gets stalled before he gets to Anvil. So that increases the chance of a one down massively. This is a one down, come on, come on. Yes, we did it. Also, in groups of five or more in challenge mode, I've noticed the Zari Crossbow is a really good, that special attack is 110 damage on pretty much anything that you want from skeletal mystics to shamans to fispula portal to the rope room to ulm to fossa mother doubt you name it it's it's great i totally forget that i could grab the uh, 500k ck cape so i'm gonna go ahead and grab that real real quick the warrior nice there we go uh realistically i can probably get up to this which is a 1,000 challenge mode KC, like 480, 488 more KC, because, uh, yeah. Getting these last rounds could take a while, so I'll do some CM, so hopefully that's enough. Good luck. Oh, no way, Ancestral Rope Top. No way, dude. I would have loved that, because I need that for, uh, I'm pretty sure I need this. Yeah, I need the top and the bottom. We got a professional CM goer here. This man's about to hit 2,000 CMs. Shin the Rangers, tag the Majors, and it was easy. Skip. Even though it's scuff, you know, the times are still pretty good, I guess. You know, 30, 35 for, uh, for our makeshift-ass team. Arcane per scroll kick. Yo, you guys want some pennies? Can you guys stay on the mage side for one hit? Just stay, just stay for one hit before you go. Just stay for one hit. Okay, now you can go. Now you can move. Now you can move. Yep, there you go. Mage setting is the easiest way to skip specials if you didn't know. It's a trap! I did find ways to consistently do challenge mode raids and earn significantly more points per hour than doing normal solos. This is really nice because I have more options and CM raids also helps me get the CM capes because you can only get those from the challenge mode. There were two big hurdles, however, that I had realized I needed to overcome if I wanted the CM race to be better points per hour than regular. The biggest hurdle was figuring out how to skip the scavenger prep because it would save me a lot of time. Sometimes it can take extra few minutes just to get the potion ingredients and planks for scavs, make the bank and then try to prep early. So doing that just makes it not worth it versus doing normals for drops. The second hurdle was surviving CM Ohm using Shadow because as I mentioned before, you do take more damage doing the Shadow run and you also don't get any heals unlike using a Sang at Ohm. So how did I manage to make it work? First, I needed to figure out how many brews I had to bring to guarantee survival past Vanguards because I get my first big food drop after killing Vanguards. This ended up being about 4 personal brews. After that, I needed to figure out how many brews I needed to bring to consistently survive CM Ohm solo. This turned out to be around 6 brews with a Blood Fury. Keep in mind, I also have to use brews in order to make my way to Ohm, right? So the 4 brews I have myself and then the brews I get from the bosses, by the time I get to Ohm, that leaves me usually with 2 brews left. Which is clearly not enough because I said I need 6 to consistently do Ohm. So how do I get the extra four without having to kill scavs and, you know, go through all that RNG? 
there is a super easy solution and honestly pure genius because in the last floor right before ohm fasa the boss drops five in darkened juice 100 percent of the time and skeletons also give 100 percent uchu seeds so i simply pick up those two items and that makes me five brews at the end no scaving needed this only takes one minute or less every single time guaranteed which is several minutes faster than killing scavs and going through all that bullshit. My average CM solo times now consistently is better than my old PB solo CM time that I set for the Grandmaster Challenge. This strategy is not much harder than doing regular solos for me. Typically, I would get 58k points and 500 every 30 minutes doing one CM versus about 62k points doing two regular chambers every 45 minutes. So I would say CMs are a bit better for me points wise. For the people learning solo raids, don't expect CMs to be better points per hour as it's way easier to die in CM raids versus regular. So keep that in mind. And my weapon choices might be a bit questionable with the melee. I pretty much main the Fang for everything up until Ohm and then I Lance Ohm. The reason why I don't bring something like a Scythe or a Maze is because the Fang overall is the best. And I need to save some inventory space so I can bring like my brews and stuff. Tecton can be done consistently in 3 minutes or less with Venge and landing just one Warhammer spec. Ooh, nice. I got a Twisted Kit. This would have been a 39, 38 minute raid, which is pretty good without having to do anything like super sweaty. But yeah, I had to use the restroom mid, mid raid and I lost like 7 minutes. Uh, there's that, but we're going to keep going. The, this strat seems to be working out pre uh, pretty good, so I'm going to keep working on that. Now we have two sets of Twisted Ancestral in the bank. This is so unnecessarily scary. All right, well, we PB'd, uh, nice, by over a minute. No special skips or anything. We just did the bosses normally. Dude, how are you hitting so hard? All right, well, this is why we have purple sweets. Because Mama Dial is probably gonna kill me if I don't have purple sweets. So I'm ready to just take it at any moment. So I'm fucking ready to just take it. Now eventually I do I do get a free hit. No matter what. <laughs> so yeah. Just takes a little bit longer, but it's better than dying. Sure beats dying, so there you go. Yeah, I just want to venge KO that. Yes. It worked. That was really fast. Light bear ring is absolutely amazing for challengeable raids, especially in the souls I found because it synchronizes perfectly even with endgame gear, with uh giving you more chances to land specs at the right time. So let's say you start the phase, you know, you land your hammer specs on the hand, but you miss. It's okay, you just run the mage hand, complete the mage hand, and then by the time that's done, you also will have 50% spec to try again. So effectively, you get twice the chances, and usually I rarely will, you know, not have a hammered hand in my solos. Yes! 14 HP. Uh, okay, okay, I learned my lesson and not fuck around. Oh, I got a deck scroll though. Oh, I am so dumb. I forgot the juice. I forgot to pick up the juice. Fuck, first we of the day and I have such good RNG. Can we fuck it up? You know what? I'm just gonna YOLO this and go in with three brews because this is such an amazing entry time and I would just love to smash my PB. Jesus. Gonna have to do this because I uh, freaking didn't pick up the juice. It's like an idiot. I'm supposed to do that. Alright, but we're still, you know, we're still learning. The new strat. Oh, good, good, good. Yes! Oh my god, good hits. We could probably... We might be able to salvage this raid. Holy blood fairy pro. Let's go. I really needed that. This could be a super good PB, but it's really tight. Oh my god, look at that PB. What the f- 
book 34 minutes <laughs> with a scuffed ass inventory I, that i brought holy crap i had to i had to spam purple sweets De definitely not happening anytime soon again Trying to do fast charge more raids consistently on an Iron Man definitely has its drawbacks because if you were on a normal account, you could spam E Purple Sweets all day long and technically have infinite food, but I can't do that, so I can only use the sweets in emergencies, and this is when it matters. So I found a really good way to do the agility room without having to do the Kirby skip, and you get more points, is of course more safe. And that is to shadow on long range the rangers at the start. So if you go all the way to the back and you hit it on a nice angle, you can do two shots each ranger without them even noticing you. So it's technically free hits and you take way less damage. And then I just tank the majors and take the crystal that way. Oh, I got a purple though. It's And it's not a new item though. Oh, Twisted Buckler. Dang. Okay. All right. Scuff you go stuff, you know. Yo, that Venge KO. Love love to see it. Hey, hey. Please hit some big numbers. Oh wait, I think it's Yes. Oh that one Venge was perfect. Oh purple. <gasps> oh let's go. We actually got a purple. And it's a collection lock slot. Finally, dude. Let's go. Yes, that's actually insane. Oh, let's go, dude. I've never actually seen the collection log um, pop up before because it's been glitched forever. Let's go. Din's Bulwark. Yeah, sir. We got we got it. We got it back. Oh, Elder Maul, Ancestral Top, Ancestral Bombs. Of course, Ancestral Bombs. I bet your ass Ancestral Bombs is going to be last. It's going to be last again. I, I swear, man. It was last before. It'll probably be last. I've been keeping track of how many charges I'm using per challenge mode solo with the Blood Fury and it's actually pretty chill. It's around like 100 or so charges and it makes sense because I'm not scything or using claws which usually will accelerate the charge use, the Fang and the Lances. Relatively chill. So yeah, 100 means that one shard will last me probably around 90 challenge mode rates. So that's super worth it. Yo, blood shard. Yes, sir. Thanks. Well, I'm happy with the progress I've made towards the cog slot so far. We did get quite a few log slots and big ones too, like Kodai. So I will be slowing down a bit now so I can work on Theater of Blood, aka Rates 2, for the same reasons as I started this video. I still have some items to refill atop the Sang Staff and the Justicia Play Body, and to an extent the Top Cape as well, as uh, I can just work towards that since I only need regular tops to get that. So I will be shifting my focus to top for a future parts video. There should still be some time, maybe a month, maybe two, before Desert Charger 2 boss arc begins. So let's see how far we can get with the top collection log.